What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make a artwork in the style of Metal Heart. Dread Labs. This is also known as Deathcore or Trend Horror. The name Metal Heart is based on a book out of 2001 and this style was mainly seeable on DeviantArt and other internet fora around maybe 2001, 2008-ish. I remember doing this style in signatures on internet forums. Uh, when I was a little kid, but today we're gonna dive back into time and see how to recreate this style with the tools of today. So as you can see, the style mostly consists of abstract 3D renders, as well as blurry backgrounds, usually cooler colors such as blue or green, and on top of that, a lot of grids and futuristic fonts. So let's start out with the 3D renders. Just before we start, if you don't have any experience in 3D, that's of course completely fine. This is a very basic tutorial on Cinema 4D, but if you don't wanna go through all of the hassle of learning 3D just to make metal hard artworks, I actually do have an asset pack called Metal Heart Essentials, which contains over 100 renders that you can use in your Metal Heart artworks. It also contains a lot of other assets that you need in order to create Metal Heart artworks. I'm gonna showcase these in a later part of the video, but for now know that there's a link to it in the description. In Cinema 4D, what we wanna do is create an abstract artwork, right? So the way we're gonna do that is, I'm just gonna change my display to Goro Shading Line so we can see all the segments on our 3D materials. Let's start out with a cube. Doesn't really matter what you're gonna start out with as long as you're gonna add some segments to it. Um, I have a cube now with three segments on each side and I'm gonna press C on my keyboard or you can also click here in order to make your object editable. What we're gonna do now is go to the deformer objects and we'll grab a displacer. And before we let go of our mouse, I'm holding shift on my keyboard in order to make this a child, as you can see here in the layer menu. Now, essentially, we're gonna go to shading, grab a noise. As you can see, our object is starting to deform already, but we're gonna change the height of this displacement maybe to 100. Let's see what that looks like. We're gonna need more, maybe 1000. Yeah, there you go. We already have one of these weird abstract renders. So essentially that's what's going on here. I'm gonna go more in depth a little bit because I wanna show you what this noise actually does. Basically on all the light and dark values of this image that you can see here, it's deforming this. So let's say that we, I don't know, make this noise texture larger by scaling it to 1000%. As you can see, this is now a different noise texture and you can get a completely different result. If you're not happy with it, you can just change the seed until you get something that you like. You can also change the type of noise. I actually find that the normal noise, well, usually works best for me. You can also play around with the high and the low clip. Dragging this out gets you a lot of different results. But yeah, that's essentially how to create one of these abstract renders. And of course, we can change it by scaling it in a certain direction as well. And let's see. I actually like this. So next thing we're going to do is give this thing a material. So underneath here, we're going to make a new default material. Under your reflectance, we're going to add a GGX reflection. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do this, but if you want to have like a higher quality render, I would always advise you to use these sampling subdivisions here and change it to at least eight. This is going to take a while for you to render though, but it, I love the results in this. I highly recommend doing it. It's worth the time. Next, we're going to make a new material and we're going to apply this to a sky object. Drag in the material and put it on a cube. And for the sky material, we can do a, an HDRI texture if you want to. We can do a gradient, doesn't really matter. Let's just check out real quick what a gradient does. Uh, also, we're gonna make the sky invisible by going to uh, render tags, compositing. There's now a compositing tag on our sky object and we're gonna just click on scene by camera and check that off. So I'm gonna hold Alt and R on my keyboard here to show you what this looks like now in uh, the render view, or at least will look like. So kind of okay, I guess. I don't really want a gradient. I think I do want to have something else here. So let's go with a small studio HRI. It's a little bit more realistic and then we can always just put this into a gradient. I'm just gonna click on layer here and under the layer, I'm gonna now click on effect, colorize. And under this gradient from the colorize, make a nice gradient from black to white. And we can kind of crunch this, to add a little bit more contrast in there. I think something like this is fine. All right, so I'm just going to remove this for a second because we don't really need a preview. I think let's just pick a perspective here. The final thing that we want to do in Cinema 4D, uh, first we're going to set up our render size, of course. So I'm going to do 3000 by 3000 pixels and 300 DPI for if we would like to print this. And we're going to make this a transparent PNG. All right, so then uh, the output and the save is done let's save up our project as well all right so now the last thing we need to do is select our camera and we're gonna drag these points out here and if you don't see anything change like i have just click on this button so you can see what your camera is seeing this basically makes this so a uh, we're using a super wide angle lens and as you can see this uh, definitely like 
makes uh, like the render look so much more Y2K. I, this is just the definition of Y2K right here, the wide angle lenses in 3D. So yeah, let's just pick out a nice spot here for, or a nice spot for the camera. I think something like this is quite nice. And what I'm gonna do now is render this and I'm gonna do this off screen because it takes, probably it's gonna take a while, but, but yeah, let's just render this out and put it into Photoshop. All right, so we're gonna drag this render into Photoshop. And as you can see, our reflections are a little bit noisy. And this is what I talked about with the sampling subdivisions on our material. If we would have gone to the reflectance the layer sampling and if we would have put, put this up this highly decreases the amount of noise that you can see on the render right here so just so you know all right so now we're going to make a new layer and let's just make an abstract gradient uh, background here i'm just going to make a black and white uh, gradient and you might have noticed that i'm have been working in black and white and there's a reason for that and i'm going to show it to you in a minute uh, it's just to give us a little bit more freedom in whatever we want to do now go to filter render clouds and we're gonna just put this to maybe overlay and we're gonna blur this a little bit maybe with 25 pixels and let's scale this um, up on this like horizontal edge and let's just drag the render in front of there and we're gonna make a duplicate of our render and the one in the back we're gonna scale that up and rotate a little bit and maybe change the blend mode a little bit like to screen screen is fine all right, so now that we have our base, let's make a gradient map in order to give it some color. So I'm gonna to go to adjustments, gradient map. Let's just make a nice colored ramp. So we'll start off with black, maybe like a really, really dark blue, something like this. And the next thing we're gonna do is color like this. The last color is gonna be white, or at least almost white. And maybe like a, this turns a little bit more into like this mint, mint, minty color, I guess. So something like this. And you might say, Tom, this doesn't look like a metal hard artwork at all. And that's because we're gonna play around with the blend mode of our gradient map. And usually a soft light blend mode works really nicely with this, like you can see right here. So uh, now that we have this, uh, we kind of need to add some elements in order to make this thing look a little more futuristic. And that's what we're gonna do in Illustrator. So let's hop into Illustrator and make a new file. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna paste these Illustrator elements back into the works later. But for now, let's just make a uh, copy of what we have so far by pressing Control, Alt, Shift, E on our keyboard. And that's Command, Option, Shift, E if you're on a Mac. I'm gonna select everything with Command, a and then copy it and paste it into Illustrator and I'm gonna lock this layer immediately and now we have the freedom to you know try out some couple of things in order to make this look a little bit more futuristic so here we're gonna use the rectangular grid tool and I'm gonna make sure that we don't have any fill and we do have a stroke a white stroke and we're gonna just draw out a grid and I'm gonna make this grid really really small and we'll just start out for one just to make sure that we have like squares if that makes sense And usually a lot of these elements play with transparency as a factor. So um, let's just make this 50% uh, opacity. And I'm gonna paste this in our artwork. All right, so now we have this uh, grid in Illustrator. Uh, we can just delete flattened version. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this invisible where our 3D render is set, uh, sitting. So let's just hold Control or Command uh, on our keyboard while clicking on the thumbnail of our render. And then we're gonna make an inverted mask on our grid. And we're going to do that by holding Alt or Option and then clicking on the mask button at the bottom. As you can see, it's now invisible wherever the mask is. And we can try it if it works the same with the render in the background a little bit uh, by doing the same thing. So we're going to hold Command or Control to select our render. And under our layer mask, I'm just going to go and make sure that my color black is in the background. All right, and then I'm going to just grab the paint bucket tool and fill our uh, mask in with black. I guess it kind of works. Okay, let's see if we can add a couple of other elements in there. So another favorite of mine is definitely like the abstract uh, Y2K-ish ellipse. So we're going to make a really thick ellipse. Grab both of these points. And we're going to click on this scissor button here. So basically now we have two half circles. circles. And what I'm gonna do is go to the stroke here and we're gonna give this a gradient like this. I'm gonna make the gradient follow the stroke along like this one. I think it's, I think that's the correct one at least. And I'm gonna make it white and then I'm gonna make the other one a 0% opacity. And we're gonna have that start at 10% maybe. And what we can do is basically do the same thing here. So then we'll just reverse the gradient like that and then we can just copy this and hopefully it will just base an illustrator all right let's move this up somewhere like here play around with the opacity as well 
And another thing that this needs is a code layer. How I usually get my code layers is by going to a random website. Let's just go to uh, dreadlabs.net for a second. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just gonna show you the highlighted pack, the Metal Heart Essentials pack, which you can see right here. Essentially, this pack contains uh, 100 abstract renders, 20 backgrounds, 20 grids, 20 overlays, 20 separate elements, five code layers, 10 layers, 10 grain textures, 16 gradients, six, five layer styles, three Photoshop actions, one detailed usage guide, and example PSD file. If this is something that you're interested in, if you want to save a lot of time and you do want to create a lot of these cool metal heart art artworks, consider getting this pack because it's up for a discount right now because it just launched. Anyways, we're going to save this website as save to our downloads might take a while and let's just open this website with notepad and this essentially gives you a lot of html code that you can use it might be way too much like i'm seeing here uh, and otherwise you can just copy a couple of things that you think might be interesting i'm just gonna do this and of course we need a nice font for this so what i usually try to do is a monospaced font uh, those usually work the best and let's see grab this one and make the text a lot smaller maybe like 10 pixels and we still need to auto the line height and we can just grab this code layer and we can also lower the opacity of that as well all right so it's starting to look a little bit more like a metal heart artwork uh, but it's going to need some extra detail in there and that's where i'm going to use uh, the cut labs pack for uh, so let's see if we can grab a cool overlay um, i think this one works really nicely uh, as you can see, this adds a grid and a couple of transparent blocks as well. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, let's go to the separate elements and add this one in the background here. And we're going to install the layer styles as well real quick. So we're going to give this a nice glow maybe. Okay, so I'm going to give this this like bevel and emboss transparent thing and i'm going to rasterize it immediately and then invert the colors so it's a little bit more light and we're just going to drop this opacity as well and maybe they'll do like one more with let's see what else is in the separate elements i guess well, nice nice inspection form because it needs to be inspected if it's going to be like a proper metal heart artwork and now that i look at it maybe let's move the code layer up a little bit and we'll just mask the code layer out as well maybe mm, maybe only with the top render here which is this one oops need to inverse that of course we got the wrong one yes okay now it's now it's done properly all right so now that we are at this phase um you've added some details you did the abstract render you did the background coloring you have some coding you have some separate elements now if you want to finish this uh, you might want to add a glow to this uh, in order to maybe you know make it look a little bit more i don't know y2k ish as well as adding some grain and i'm going to show you how so i'm going to just grab uh, the same technique that we used in order to make a visible copy so we're going to go Control alt shift e or command option shift e if you're on a mac i'm gonna go to filter blur gaussian blur and we'll do a 25 percent blur or sorry 25 pixels blur and we're gonna change the blend mode to screen and as you can see this creates a nice glow maybe a little bit too drastic so we'll lower the opacity a little bit maybe like a 50 percent glow it's nice enough i'm gonna make a new layer now to add some grain i'm gonna go to edit fill 50 percent gray go to filter noise add noise we a 15% noise that's uniform and monochromatic. And we're going to duplicate that noise. And we're going to name the first noise, noise multiply. And the second one, noise screen. Essentially what this is going to do is this multiply noise is going to show some darker uh, grain on our artwork. And the other one is going to make uh, show some lighter grain. Basically, uh, what we're going to do now is press Ctrl or Command M on our keyboard, and this brings up the curves menu. And with the multiplier noise, you want to slide this right slider up to the left in order to make this grain a little bit more subtle. And you only want the grain to be mostly visible in the lighter areas. And we're going to do the same thing with the screen. We're going to set the blend mode to screen, press Ctrl or Command M on our keyboard, but then we're going to bring the left slider to the right here. This is a little bit too much contrast. You can also bring this down a little bit to reduce the contrast. But there you go. Uh, we'll group these and we'll call them grain textures. We'll call this one glow. Group these together with modifications. Let's see before and after. 
I think this uh, works quite nicely. And of course you can grab different types of renders, layer them on top of each other, use blending modes in order to create these nice abstract backgrounds for yourself. So there you have it guys, a couple of techniques that I use in order to create metal hard artworks. I hope this video was useful to you and if you want to get the metal hard pack for yourself, there's a link down in the description like I said. Uh, this will support me in the channel heavily and this will make me be able to make more tutorials for you guys. So there's a win-win situation right there. If you want to get the PSD file for this, you can actually become a patron of mine. This gets you access to all these abstract renders uh, as well as all of the other project files from all of my tutorials and that's over 100 PSDs at this point. So if you become a patron and you want to get the Metal Heart Asset Pack as well, you'll get a 15% discount on that as well, as well as an exclusive Discord role on the Dreadlabs community server. And if you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive tutorials such as how to start a death metal logo from scratch, how to make your own clothing brand and much, much more. So with all of that out of the way, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I hope you have fun making your own Metal Heart artworks. This is Tom from Dreadlabs shooting out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next video.